Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today is day 12 of the 12 days of Christmas, a video series where I've been sharing with you one new Squarespace customization every single day until today. So for this last video, I want to share with you a really awesome trick. I want to show you how you can implement a typewriting effect for headings in Squarespace. Now, the cool thing about this customization is that on one hand, the code is pretty much done for us. So we're going to be able to set it up in no time. And on the other hand, this code is going to work for 7.0, 7.1 Classic Editor and 7.1 Fluid Engine. So if this is something that your client has been requesting or it's something that you like to surprise them with, keep on watching to learn how to make it happen. Alrighty, so here I have a 7.1 site and you can see how I have the typewriting animation enabled in this heading. So this is what we're going to be creating today using a third party plugin. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it because this is going to be a really cool customization to set up. So over here, I have my 7.1 site, and this is the heading that I'm going to be adding the typewriting effect to. And this is the plugin that we're going to be using. It's called type.js. Now, the first thing that we need to do here is basically set up what we need inside the heading to be able to bring in this plugin. So in here, I'm going to show you what I have inside this little block. So this is not really a text block. What we want to work with here is a code block, or at least I would recommend working with a code block because it's going to make things far easier. So in here, let me double click this. What you can see is that I have an H1 set up and you can do any heading that you want. It doesn't have to be an H1. I'm just working with an H1 here. And then here I just have the text that I want to showcase in here. And I've created a little span that doesn't really have any content in it, but it does have a class that I've called typed dash words. Now you can use any class that you want, but if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can go ahead and just use this class so that you don't have to change it anywhere else. So what's going to happen is that the plugin is going to look for this particular class, this particular particular element that you have inside your site and it's going to add any phrase that you want or any words that you want within this little span in here. So ideally what you want to have here is the span wrapped within the type of heading or paragraph or whatever it is that you want to use so that it also carries the same style as the heading. So that's why I have my span in here and not outside of it. All right, so this is pretty much everything you need to have in place before bringing in the plugin. The only thing that we need to remember is the class that we gave to this. So in my case, like I said, it's type words. You can use any other class that you like. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to go into advanced and code injection, and we're going to hop onto the type.js site, and then we're going to set things up. So the first thing that we need to do is hop onto the GitHub link that we have in here to be able to actually embed the plugin into our site. And then we can play around with the different settings that this allows us to use. All right. And then let's go ahead and go all the way down here. And what I would recommend doing here is basically installing in between quotes, this plugin through the CDN. So this is just going to be the fastest way to make this happen. So I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to paste that within my header and I'm going to save that. The next thing that we need to do is grab from this little section that's called setup. What we want to do is grab these variables that we have down here. We don't really need to use this because we're using the CDN, but we need to grab here the options sort of part of the snippet and also this very important part, which is going to look for that typed words container that we created. So let's go ahead and grab this part of the code. And I'm going to add that inside the footer. I'm going to create a little script and I'm going to just paste that in. So I'm just going to clean things up a little bit here so that we can see everything better. And now let's go ahead and walk through what we have in here. So inside this variable of options, we have a first sort of setting in here that's called strings. And then in here in the strings, this is where your phrases are going to go. So whatever it is that you want to type in here with that typewriting effect, this is where you're going to place them. So let's go ahead and replace this and add a couple more phrases. So let's do here lorem and then ipsum dolor and let's add just a couple more. So here, Oops, don't forget the quotes around the, the little phrases that you have in here. So like so, all right, perfect. Now let's go ahead and 
change this little class that we have down here for the one that we added to our span. So this is basically going to be the little function that is going to look for that area inside our website where we want to have that typewriting effect to be able to add these sentences. And it's going to apply all the options that we may add in here. So let's go ahead and add in here the class of typed words. Again, if you're using a different class, make sure to use your own class in this section. Okay, and now let's go ahead and save this and see what we have. All right, so here you can see how we have our typewriting effect all set up. It's very fast at the moment and it's not really looping. So I'm going to show you how you can modify all of those things. So if we go back into the original typed JS site, we don't really need the GitHub here anymore. You can see that there are a couple of demos in here. You can absolutely try any of these. I already have a couple in mind, so I'm just going to go up here to the basic demo and I'm going to add a couple of um, these options. So the type speed, we already have that in here. By the way, all of these times are in milliseconds, so that's why this is going so fast. I'm going to change that in a second, but right now I'm just going to bring in a couple more options for me. So I'm going to have here the back speed the back delay, the start delay, and the looping. So I want to use all of these options in here. And if you want to add more options to this part of the script, all you need to keep in mind is that you need to add a comma to separate them. So I'm just going to add a comma after this one, and then I'm going to paste in all of the rest and make sure that I have a comma after all of them. The last one doesn't really need it, so I'm just going to remove it. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the type speed. I don't want this to be that fast. I want it to be a little bit slower, so I think I'm going to increase this to 100. Again, all of these numbers are in milliseconds, so keep that in mind as a reference. Then we have the back speed. So this one refers to how fast it erases the letters. So I think I'm going to make this maybe like half the type speed. I think that would look pretty good. Then for the back delay, this is how long it waits until it starts erasing. So I think I'm going to leave that that way. The start delay, it takes one second to start. I think that's pretty good. And then for the looping, I want to change this from false to true so that we can actually have a looping effect going on and we can continue to see the typewriting effect. Depending on what goes well with your design, you may decide to leave that as false. Okay, and with all of this in place, let's go ahead and save this and take a look at the result. So here we can see how everything now gets typed in a little bit slower than before. We have a nice pace going on in there and everything starts looping. All right, awesome. So like I said, you can go back into the Type.js page and then here you can go ahead and take a look at the different options that we have in here. For example, there is this one called Fade Out Set to True. I guess we could try that one out. I don't know. It's a little bit too fast. I'm not entirely sure what it does, but let's go ahead and test it out. So like I said, the important part here is just to make sure that you have a comma before or after the previous option and then add your new one in. The new one doesn't really need the comma. You can leave it in there if you want to, but I'm just going to erase it. And then let's see what fade out does. So here. Oh, OK, that's a cool effect. All right. So you definitely lose a little bit of the typewriting if you add this effect in there, but that may be something that works with your project. So it's definitely another option to have in there. Let's try one more. I actually don't like that one for my website. So let's go ahead and try another one. Uh, let's see what else we find in here. We have a couple of more complex ones in here. I'm not really going to touch those. Let's see what else fade out. Smart backspace true. All right. If you want to set it to false, that's fine. Um, this is for inputs. So that's another thing you could try. Oh, this one shuffle. OK, let's try this one. So this, I'm assuming that is going to shuffle the different um, like phrases here. So it's not really it's going to load them in the same order. So let's go ahead and try that out. And I actually just saw another one that I want to try. So this one is cursor character. So let's do that one as well. I'm going to add that. And then, I don't know, let's do here something weird. So let's do like a plus sign um, and see how everything's go. So let's see. Oh, cool. OK, so we have the plus sign. And then is this doing it randomly? Is shuffling? OK, right now I did it in order. Let's see. Yeah, OK, it's shuffled. It's shuffled sort of like in the second round, apparently. Yeah, that one was the last one. And this is the third one. And then we have another one. OK, so I actually don't 
I'm not entirely sure if I like the shuffle, but I do like the different cursor there, so we could definitely keep it. But anyway, as you can see, this is a pretty easy setup. All you need to consider is that everything needs to be set up inside the code injection section. So if this is something that your client is going to modify, you may want to let them know how they can add more phrases in here. It's just a matter of adding a comma to separate them and then making sure that your phrase is wrapped in between quotes and you're good to go. Now, before we wrap this up, let's go ahead and take a quick look at mobile. I'm actually going to remove that cursor from there. Um, let's go ahead and save this and then open this up. And if we start shrinking things down, everything should work correctly because we have all of the space that is being created every time a new phrase gets added. So nothing gets overlap, everything gets sort of pushed down to be able to make room for those new phrases. And because we have that span wrapped within the actual type of heading that we're working with, we continue to have the same styles as the H1 does. All right, my friend, and there you have it. That's how you can apply a really cool typewriting animation for headings in Squarespace. Thank you so much for joining me for this series. I really hope that you found at least one of the customizations helpful for your current project. If you liked today's video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future content, and I will see you next time.